Hello, and welcome back to another episode of History and Whatever. And uh, today, we're doing a little more local music history with uh, Rudolph Korv. And uh, we're in the Blue Barn Sound Studio. What's up? What's up? Hey, hey, How's yeah, going? I was just going to say. I didn't know if you wanted to be to pitch in or not, so yeah. <laughs> oh, you pitch in anytime you want. The, everybody hears me talk all the time, so. <laughs> well, everybody, you know, whoever. But, <laughs> no, I'm uh, really happy to be here and glad to get to talk with you, Rudy. Uh, we have, I, I've known you for several years, and we, we've had some fun times at the open mics and whatnot, and uh, I really like your album that you put out the divided and i'm glad that we had this opportunity to get together and talk and maybe we can hear some stories about those songs or whichever ones you chose to bring today for the barn door recording or the blue barn sound yeah there it is. <laughs> sounds about right yeah well tell us a little bit about yourself cool uh so i'm originally from lake havasu arizona i was born and raised in the mojave desert and i uh, lived there for about 30 years and then uh Long story short, uh, my wife and three kids, we sold everything we owned and we moved to Eugene, Oregon, where uh, we met you and other like, like-minded like musicians. And uh, yeah, it's been a quite an adventure and we'll be here 10 years on Halloween this year. Wow. Well, that's awesome. I mean, yikes. I can't handle the desert at all. <laughs> Dude, it's the hottest city in the country. And uh, so I think the record's like 136. Oof. Dude, it's hot. <laughs> it's so hot. Yeah, well, I'm glad you uh, made the change. Um, well, I kind of had a couple of questions for you before uh, we get into it. Um, so w when did you start writing music? I know it took me a long time to kind of get into a groove of uh, being able to play before I started actually writing. So I don't know if you can remember. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, I started... I, I, when I when I was growing up, my my parents didn't listen to music, uh, so uh, the first I, I think the only cassette tape I had in my house at the time was uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival, uh, the Chronicles album, which is nice. freaking awesome. So yeah. uh, from there, uh, when I was in junior high and high school, started listening to the grunge scene because it was the '90s. So you know Pearl Jam and Nirvana and all the, you know, Metallica, and which isn't grunge, but uh, Guns N' Roses, uh, those kind of bands, Soundgarden. Yeah. Uh, but my my biggest, like, hero was Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. So leading up to your question, um, I started playing guitar when I was 16 years old uh, and started writing songs, I guess, pretty much right away. Um, some of the songs actually... Uh, there's a song called, um, that's a great question. I don't even know what this is. Oh, in the middle of the night, uh, there's a song that I wrote, uh, with somebody, uh, in, and I was ni 19 years old and, uh, th they wrote a po some poetry for, uh, their mom that passed away. And, uh, so I put it to music. So I remember, I remember as early as probably 17 writing songs. Uh, and then this next album that's coming out, it's going to have a song from when I was 17 on it too. Yeah, just kind right. of pulling it out, you know, like, so, yeah. So I've been, been doing it for a long time. Took a, took a break. I uh, had, a, I had got married and had three kids and I'm an all in guy. So like, I, I didn't want to, tempt, <laughs> I, I feel like I didn't want to tempt myself, you know, to like go out and like gig and do stuff. Cause, uh, you know, there's a lot of regrets on not being around working. So working and then music would be just not a good cocktail, yeah. you know. Well, that's that's what we all got to do. We got to make choices on uh, what we can handle. Mm -hmm. And uh, family always comes first, you know. But let me see. I, and another question. What Would you put a label on your style? Because you know me. I'm a total country guy. Mm -hmm. uh, traditional country music mm -hmm. guy. So, I mean. Do you have something that you identify with in that area? Uh, yeah, like, I mean, semi-recently within the last 10 years is it boils down to Americana music, which is, um, I, I kind of found a home in. Mm -hmm. uh, growing up, listening to the the scene that I did, like like I said, Metallica and, um, you know, Pearl Jam and stuff. Um, I love that stuff and I still do, but then when I wrote, uh, it was so much more tender. Right. Uh, so then I was like, why, how, why would I write something that I wouldn't even listen to in my own car? You know? 
Yes. So um, what, from there, I uh, was a little frustrated, kind of like a closet songwriter uh, for the most part. And there wasn't really an avenue in the desert where we're at to showcase, you know, your songs and being a teenager and writing like, you know, these heartfelt ballads, like it probably wasn't the coolest thing, I guess you could say <laughs> at the time. But then, um, you know, getting a little bit older and you seeing how people, uh, I always thought I was like part of the island of misfit toys. I didn't really belong anywhere and uh, seeing a lot of really great uh, musicians coming up and it boils down to Americana because it's just this big mixing pot of rock and blues and country. And uh, not until... I wasn't even a big country fan, um, even though on my record, a lot of people say, oh man, I love those country songs. And it's it's wild because uh, I didn't really look at myself country, but now I, what I do is I just kind of accept it and I, I, I say thank you. And <laughs> Well, you know, uh, country and Americana are very close to each other. Yeah. And uh, I think if you throw steel, pedal steel or any kind of steel guitar on something, they're like, oh, that's country. Right. Which I don't really agree with that. Yeah. Because it, it especially on the uh, on the divided, I really enjoyed the way you put that album together. Mm -hmm. And uh you know, I, I didn't have a way to label it. I figured it would, it's just original music that, uh, so I wanted to ask. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, people, people do. And, uh, even like I was on this radio show once and they were just like, I don't even know what that is. Like, and not in a negative way. Right. Uh, but, uh, I heard, I love the pedal steel and I heard it, uh, when I was, when I was kind of trying to record at first and I thought, you know, I think that'd be really cool. And, it, and it's really worked out and, Build a pretty cool relationship with a guy in Portland that, that that does some live shows and records with me and stuff. But as far as country goes, I'm just digging in now. I mean, uh, my wife's a big fan of '90s country. I'm not. Um, <laughs> some people are, some people aren't. Uh, and but I really started listening to country music when I heard Aaron Lewis come out with his country albums. Oh and, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. because it was stained with a twang. The road and. Uh... Uh, that was one of his albums, I thought. Or was that a song? Uh, it might have been a song. Aaron, yeah. I am familiar with Aaron Lewis. It was, yeah. He put out some good country stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. And then then you have all these guys coming out like Tyler Childers and um, uh, my mind's going to go like Chris Stapleton for sure. Uh, who's the guy that sings the Turtles song? <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Sturgill Simpson. Sturgill Simpson. Oh, oh yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm a big fan. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, like, you see these guys, and they do lean more country, but, um, you know, you can kind of go and, and play those songs anywhere, and it's good music, so. Yeah, I that's something that I've been kind of blown away by, is there's people all over the world who like country music, specifically. Mm -hmm. I mean, they probably like music of all kinds all around the world, but I was surprised to know that there's people in, like, Korea and Japan that love country music yeah. and they show up like Brad Paisley does big shows in Japan, but mm -hmm. at least before, I don't know if he still does, but, uh, yeah, it's universal. I think that good music comes through no matter what style. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but well, what do you think? You ready, you ready to play one for yeah. us? I, I had one picked out, but I think I'm going to switch it up because uh, we were just talking about that song I wrote when I was 18. Uh, so I think I'll play that one since we, we talked about it a little bit, so. Okay. Yeah. And then uh you want to give us a little backstory on that one? Yeah, yeah. So like like I was saying before, um I was working at this grocery store and uh this young lady um I would I would work in the middle actually it's funny, in the middle of the night. That's not what this that's what the song's called, but it wasn't because of that. But I I was working uh, stocking shelves, so I'd go to work at ten o'clock at night and get off at like seven or eight in the morning mm -hmm. and uh no one's around at that time of night, so I'd I'd bring my guitar and play on my breaks and stuff. And uh, one of the gals that worked there, she uh, we became really good friends and close. And she was telling me how she lost her mom, and uh, so she had this po these po this poetry. So I I arranged it and you know made it work and put some music to it. And uh, when I play this at shows and get a chance to story tell, it just reminds me of like as you get older, you lose people because it's a, a way a lot. It just happens in life and. Uh, so every time I sing this song, I see the faces of the people that gone on before me, you know? Absolutely. So. I totally have. I wrote a song about my buddy, and I know I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, let it fly. Cool, cool. All right, in the middle of the night. Here we go. In 
And are you up in the heaven sky And holding my place by your side Say it's time that passes by that the pain lessens and then fades away. And as the memories fade. Try and hold on tight But your face is all I can see In the middle of the night and I wish you could come back home tonight and back where you belong and teaching me life struggles and all that's right and all that's wrong as the memories fade, I try and hold on tight, but your face is all I can see in the middle of the night. Mary Margaret, Mary Margaret Come and see me tonight And in my dreams or in my thoughts And I will not cry, I will not as the memories fade, I try and hold on tight, but your face is all I can see in the middle of the night. As the memories fade I try and hold on tight But your face is all I can see In the middle of the night Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Wow. Way to give me goosebumps, hey, man. Hey, all right. Make your spine shiver. I mean, there's some really, really strong uh, lyrics in there. Yeah, I mean, awesome. it, as the memories fade, I try to hold on tight. Mm -hmm. And that's that's really speaks to me because, uh, you know, you, you seem to remember less and less of people who are in your life less and less. Life but, moves on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I always try to remember what my friends taught me so that that really speaks um to me it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, shiver down my spine yeah, shake yeah. down off. what a great song man yeah thanks man um all right was it was it mary margaret was that yeah it's her mom's name yeah mom's name. okay mm -hmm. i i i thought people people a... think it's like a catholic thing sometimes and it's like no nah, it's not irish maybe <laughs> maybe <laughs> 
Well, what do you think? Uh, which one would you like to move on to next? Uh, man, let's do something new. This is brand new. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's another deep, a deep tune. Uh, yeah, so uh, like I said before, I had a wife. I, ha- I have a wife and uh, three kids. And uh, two of my, my two oldest have moved out because they're old, you know, older now. And uh, I still got a, a young 17 uh, year old at home. And uh, he found himself, uh, yeah, being a little bit lost in life, I guess, uh, long story short. And uh, uh, sometimes when you're that age, you can feel misunderstood and, and unappreciated and unloved. And, um, you know, being a, being a father that loves your kid, you you have to be a, a dad. You can't just be their buddy. And uh, so I have an opportunity in my, in my son's life to, um, uh, to push, but not push too hard, not push too hard. It pushes them away. So trying to find that balance of, um, you know, when you find yourselves in really bad trouble, uh, to be a support and not be, a uh, like a dictator, but sometimes it's, you gotta put the, put the grindstone down and really like be that person you don't want to be. Uh, cause that's what you're supposed to do. Cause you want your kids to turn out good and and, and my kid's awesome. I, I love him to death, but I wrote the song in the middle of all this just because uh, he just found himself into some trouble and feeling lost and stuff. So, Yeah, and you you want to do the best you can for yeah. your and, son. And, you know? and my, uh, my a little backstory, I mean, my, my dad had me at 60. And uh, so, like, I, I had pretty much raised myself. So I didn't have a lot of lessons from dad. And uh, I, le- I like to learn from other people's mistakes. Like, oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. And um, we do the best we can. And then we find out later, you know, how well we did with the checks and balances. Like, did I mess things up or did I do good? And I feel like I did pretty good, but I see a lot of things that I did wrong too. So, Well, you know, when it comes to things like that, you just have to do the best you can. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whatever happens is there. But as long as you're there for them, you know, that's the best you can do. I mean, I can't remember what I was doing at 17, but I'm sure I wasn't easy to deal with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you learn from your parents in two ways, right? You learn from uh, what they say mm-hmm. and, w- and their wisdom that they try to impart to you. Mm-hmm. But you also learn from their example. Yeah. So like in my family specifically, we had lots of, uh, you know, uh, substance abuse problems and mm-hmm. whatnot. So... I learned from observation as, you know, he wasn't around as much when I was a kid. Uh, But we, we, (laughs) that's a very relatable subject, my man. And that what, uh, what incredible emotions that can provoke too. So yeah, for sure. All right. Cool, man. Yeah. So uh, let me see if I can throw out this big old B minor chord on (laughs) just things sit on my lap like this here. Usually I sing standing up. So, all right, here we go. It's called uh, Brand New Tune. It's going to be on the next record. Um, it it uh, hasn't been recorded yet. Oh, and it's, my. Uh, it's called Find Your Way Home. each other in the hall like each of us don't care and the times that we meet face to face you aren't really even there and I'm not sure what you're thinking what's going through your head so my heart keeps on breaking Knowing what's ahead And I remember I was once like you With the wood at my door But when I stare into those eyes I don't see my little boy anymore And I know it seems confusing Sometimes it's hard to see There is nothing I want more for For you to feel free Won't you find your way 
great melody on that and I, I know one thing that really stuck out to me in there was it's like let this moment set the tone yeah you know you're just trying to convey a little bit you know yeah, hey, yeah. I, I, I you love have a choice you. yeah let this moment like make what's going to happen next it's so hard to see past friday night you know to just a, a one night ahead to try to plan into the future and think you know 20 years from now or whatnot mm -hmm. uh that's that's definitely something we all experience mm -hmm. what a what a powerful song yeah and uh that one was a magic moment it came out in a in, a, in like a one sitting and uh except the the chorus i was just thinking about stuff in my car and like while i was driving around probably to work and back or something and that find your way home came out and uh pulled out my uh little voice recorder on my phone and and, the, and it was written around that so yeah yeah isn't it strange how those little moments uh that if you don't let them escape they can be really something uh you know like i always have a notebook with me to write mm -hmm. down things and uh for a long time i was writing all my music in black ink and my jokes in blue. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Just so that I could tell the difference when I'm writing song lyrics and uh, and jokes. But I I stopped doing that. I have separate notebooks. I just don't even try to mix them. Yeah, anymore. yeah. But uh, I saw a really great interview with uh, Jason Isbell. I don't know if you know who that is. He's a he's a, a country slash Americana musician songwriter, and he was talking about in this new this about this new album. Uh, he was uh, the, I think HBO did a special is where I saw it. That's where it was. And uh, his process on songwriting was to, he writes the songs and he gets them to where they need to be. Uh, then he has, then he goes to the studio and he has the band come. Uh, the band here sits and listens to him play the song on his guitar twice. And then they write the chords and notes down in those two passes. And then they record. And uh, he says, if it's not recording, like you said, it's not recording and it's something happened and you missed it it's gone forever and uh yeah so you, you kind of mentioned that and i thought that's a little bit extreme like i mean obviously like it'd be nice to have that kind of like you know time <laughs> to do that right but uh the pressure of a band to like be on and not know the song and uh, that's why songs are so great because people are flying by the seat of their pants and, and creating together yeah yeah and there's a a way that you're capturing the exact feeling that you're trying to mm -hmm. emote. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Yeah, very cool. That well, I'm looking forward to that next album, man. See hearing that with the with the full shebang. Yeah, uh, that's gonna be, <laughs> that's and, gonna and that's be the other killer. thing. I'm not sure. I don't know. Like I, I I I hear pedal steel on that, and I hear some you know things, but uh, I just made a little quick recording, and I have sent it out to some people because uh, I'm part of some songwriting organizations, and uh, everyone was talking about how they thought that was the finished product. So um, it's not because I flubbed on the first note a little bit and I wasn't happy with it. But uh, yeah, so it might be it might just be that, but it might it might have a full production, too. So, yeah, it's so hard to say, especially for sure. Right. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, yeah, hey, you know, you got to serve the song. So whatever it comes, whatever happens. So. Yeah. Well, and that's kind of one of the strange things about being a musician, too, is you make these choices, mm -hmm. you know, especially when you're writing. Do I want to, uh, you know, how do I want to put these together and, and in what order is most powerful? Because uh, I know that I've accidentally said lines like backwards, and I've noticed that that does deduct from the song. Hmm. It's how strange. Yeah, you know? right. Like, I, I, oh, I messed up live. Nobody really notices, but I'm like, no, the effect was different. And it's it's yeah. supposed to be that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, man, you're just got these songs that give me the shivers. Uh, <laughs> well, what do you think? You got another one for us? Yeah, we do more. Uh, let me, you know what? Let me do this one. I was going to do that song about Oregon, but let's do the Marble Town one. Oh, I was, that's, Oregon's a great song. Yeah. Do you want to do that one instead? Oh, either one. I mean, we have as much time as yeah, you're yeah. into. So, uh, uh, let's see here. Let me think about that because it i don't get to sing this one very often let's do the marble town one yeah all right yeah it was it was kind of a tie so um this tune i wrote um i think this was a this was one of those magic moments too they don't always happen that way i i feel like i'm such a um like a not great songwriter because i really have to um strive to record to make a song it doesn't come easy a lot of people it comes real easy and stuff but uh, one of the things is i feel like everything i do has to be like i don't know like the, an anthem or something which is not so and once i figured out that i didn't have to do that um you know I, there's a bunch of songs that nobody probably ever hear so which is good because it's like a, <laughs> yeah. it's an exercise you know oh, but uh skill building yeah. skill building yeah and and uh trying to write at least a couple times a week i'd like to write every day but i, I just don't have the time but um yeah so no i feeling. uh i wrote this song marble town uh it was like one of those like i said magic moments i think i was on a flight from seattle to memphis uh for something and uh i just had this idea of like i was trying to find out because this is my first record i was trying to find out what do i have to say uh, is it even important? Um, like, who am I in all of this? Um, why does it matter? You know, um, I, I say that this record was therapy for me because, um, like I was able to like dig deep and like say some things that I didn't know how to say out loud. I knew something, think some things were wrong. I knew I had to say some things and then I didn't uh, know how to say them. I didn't know what they were even. So, uh, this is one of those songs where that came out and, it almost didn't go on the record and i always thought that was really strange how people say oh that song didn't make it on the record because i was scraping every song i know to put on a record yeah, you know yeah, there's no yeah. extra songs you know <laughs> uh but uh th this song uh i thought you know i'm gonna do one more and this one i just was gonna go in and uh no metronomes no anything and just go in and see how it turns out and uh it turned out to be one of the most more special songs on the on the, on the record for sure and uh the title of the song the the original song uh it was titled bubble town and then a friend of mine told me how stupid that sounded so i changed it and uh because the, the idea that i had was a friend of mine he was talking about when he writes songs he tries to think of the music video like what he would be seeing the scenery and uh, i was thinking like where i came from which we'll dive into in a second but like was um a lot of closed mindedness closed mindedness a lot of people were all the same kind of people same thought patterns say everything and uh it was like this bubble 
so that I was thinking this music video would be like all this weird stuff and then it would zoom out and be like the snow globe or something, you know. Uh, but then like, again, my friend was, and I, I, re I respect him because he's a really great songwriter. He's like, that's stupid. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we were at a songwriting event and um, this guy was talking about how he lived in, I think, Montana. And he goes back into the, um, this, he was talking about how when he went back to Montana from where he was from, uh, and he's older now, probably 30, and how the quarterback's still wearing his freaking jacket, you know, like his uh, Letterman jacket. Oh, from and, high school. Yeah, he peaked in high school, you know. <laughs> the like bully and dynamite style. Yeah, and <laughs> he, he was saying how, uh, man, that place is such a Marlboro town. Like, and I didn't know what that meant other than how he was explaining it. And I thought, oh man, that's really good. Like, I think, and I asked him, I said, dude, can I, can I take that? Like, is that a thing? Like, are you writing a song about that? Or he said, no. And, uh, so when I, when I start, when I wrote the song, um, I was thinking about where I came from and, uh, long story short, I was, I was part of a group of people that did a lot of really good things and, it was really a calling on my life of like what I was supposed to be doing in life. It's like, if you ever felt that way, like you feel like you have to do comedy, you feel like you have to be a songwriter. You feel like you got to do a podcast. Yeah. You know, no, really. I mean, you guys got to do it. <laughs> yeah. You just got to put it out there, mm -hmm. for, you know, and then people can choose whatever, if they like it or not. Right. You know? But then with the good, uh, comes bad. And, um, so th this, uh, this song happened to just, work without a chorus there's not a chorus in the song at all and uh the first verse talks about um being optimistic of looking ahead and then um when we when we moved to oregon we packed everything up and we left um these people that were really kind of raised me they're like my like my parents for real uh people turned their back on us because we left and it was really unhealthy and really uncool. And uh, uh, so I make the comment that I, I wish I still were their son, even though they might not know they're doing that. And then they might not know that they uh, were acting in such a way, but they were. And as it it hurtful. However, I'm thankful because um, when we moved here and didn't know anybody, it would be really easy to go back. And, and because that relationship might have had some tension, um, we stuck it out and we're here and we're, ha we're super happy with where things are. So I don't, I try not, that's why I try not to sweat the small stuff. If that makes sense. Oh yeah. Yeah. Totally. Cause you, in hindsight, you look back and you're just like all that worry for nothing. Cause you were right where you're supposed to be and there's reasons for everything. So. Yeah. It, when you're in it, it doesn't look the same as when you've come through Yeah. and you look back and see what you were mm -hmm. going through then. Uh, but what there is some, some imagery uh in marlboro town that mm -hmm. does i mean just as a title you it kind of makes you wonder what that's about yeah and i think it might be subjective for people but to me it was after that guy was talking about people just hadn't changed and where he's from and, and we go back and people finally haven't changed they're the same uh so it fits it fits for me so yeah all right yeah marlboro town all right let's try this out here let's do it Optimistic where I've headed But I'm grateful for where I've been I watch the changing of the seasons Blowing in the wind And arriving here in this promised land With both feet planted on the ground I never thought that I could be set free from the walls of that Marlboro town
calling is what kept me In a calling sent me on Greater purpose is unveiling But I still wish I were their son And even though the times are changing And from them I hear no sound I never thought that I could be set free from the walls of that Marlboro town and Hold on to all the good I've learned Everything else I let go And I'm amazed at all the foolishness But when it's taught it's all you know And I thank Jesus every day And for this truth that I found Never thought that I could be set free from the walls of that Marlboro Never thought that I could be set free from the walls of that dead end down. Yeah, Marble Town. I know, right? You know, I'm just like sitting here listening, and uh, something that I think is so, <laughs> it really stuck out to me and a lot of people will identify with this is uh what it's about uh, all the foolishness if it's taught that's all you yeah know. Something I'm, I'm amazed it. at all the foolish foolishness but what it's if it's taught it's all you know yeah. right and that that's definitely something that i think everybody can connect with mm -hmm. because you know some things you're taught when you're growing up and then you get a little older and you realize that's wrong and it, mm -hmm. but it takes a minute to really kind of understand why that's wrong if and, you if you could pop your head out of it though yeah so like, yeah if you actually come out <laughs> yeah. in, in this in this case i'm realizing all the foolishness and then um but then also have some forgiveness for the others because they were taught that way and that that's a normal way of living for them but it's not um it's not the right way of living or it's it's not something you agree with yeah yeah anymore at least or or or, or, or ever or ever I, I just, maybe I, did, I, I might not have saw it is what i'm saying like when i was yeah. there uh but then i could look back and see how they uh, might have ditched and uh mistreated other people too so yeah absolutely mm -hmm. well great hey thank you so much for yeah doing this. man thanks uh, awesome I just, uh, I really appreciate this moment to get a little backstory behind some of these songs. Um, and I, I really think that folks are going to appreciate that too. And, uh, well, let's take a minute and, uh, tell people where they can find you. Oh, great question. Yeah. Uh, so you can, uh, see me live by going on my website at Rudolph Korv Music, R-U-D-O-L-F-K-O-R-V as in Victor, music.com. And all my dates are there, and I keep it up to date pretty well. I uh, play all, at these days. I actually play all the way across the country, so that's good. So you can catch me here and there and everywhere, uh, mostly in the Pacific Northwest and Southwest. Uh, but uh, yeah, so and if you uh, catch me in all the places online, and uh, you could check out the album by a buying it on the website or b uh, streaming it in all the places. So excellent, and then. Uh... 
for the Blue Barn is Blue Barn Sound. Yeah, bluebarnsound.com. I I built uh, like a boutique recording experience for songwriters, and uh, we've been recording a lot of really cool stuff in here, and that's coming out uh, very very well. So yeah, very pretty proud of it. Yeah, yeah it, it's this is a nice little studio right here, and uh, thanks for having me in it right here in good old Eugene. So uh, you got a little lead on a good recording studio, if you think about it. And uh, also, you got an Instagram, so some people can yeah, keep up on that. music on all the places, yeah. All right, follow him on there. And, uh, well, hey, I just want to thank you again for uh, coming on History and Whatever and giving a little background to some of these tunes. And uh, look forward to the next album coming. Awesome, thanks for having me, man. Hey, thank you. All right, have a good night, everybody. Come and see me tonight And in my dreams Or in my thoughts And I will not cry I will not As the man on his face Try and hold on tight But your face is all I can see In the middle of the night As the memories fade Try and hold on tight But your face is all I can see In the middle of the night